Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. And it's Week in Review time. And the couch will still be a regular part of the Week in Review. Just, it takes roughly five minutes or so to move my lights and microphone and camera around, and then a few minutes to move it back again. And normally, I am more than fine doing that. But right now, I am running really, really, really late on time. It's been a busy week, getting lots of videos done, but lots of other things happening this week. And I am just, well, well, this week is going to be over here. Got to save those eight minutes this time. But week in review. So we got a few things going on. Uh, as usual, the games in the picture are going to be, well, not as usual, sometimes it changes. But the games in the picture are what I am hoping to get to the table this coming week. I want to get some more, and, and some of these I've already played, but like Zombicide, uh, I'm already a few games into, more than a few games, already a whole bunch of games into the campaign already. We'll talk about that later in this video, so I hope to play more of the campaign shortly. Uh, we're going to have Adventure Tactics, uh, Adventures in Alchemy. No, the Adventures in Alchemy is the expansion coming on Kickstarter, but I hope to table this this upcoming week. Upcoming week, not weep. There's no weeping here with board games. And we have Dark Rituals. Dark Rituals, just again, I hope to table. Both of these I have fully read the rules and am prepped to go on. Have not actually tabled them, but with an active Kickstarter and an upcoming Kickstarter, I do hope to get those to the table sooner rather than later. But before we get there, let's go through the week in review. So, a few things going on here, but we're going to start with a comment. A comment from... A Sydney something, Sydney Johnson, I think. I can't remember. I should have written down the name. But effectively, I did a video this week, Games Leaving My Collection, and I got a comment that I decided to address here. In fact, one of the things I may start adding to this uh, video is responding to comments that I want to respond to during the week in depth, meaning not a casual, oh yeah, here's your answer, or thanks so much, or whatever it is, but rather a full in depth response. I may start doing that in the week in review to select comments, uh, to, to just anything I think is worthy of a conversation. And so Sydney said something along the lines of, you know, watch my week in review. And I'm addressing this comment not because it's from Sydney, but rather because it's a comment that I definitely see here and there. It's a comment I've gotten before, and I'm sure I'll get it again. Which is the idea that my my content about my collection doesn't align or match up with the average gamers for a variety of reasons. Uh, to begin with, I run a game store, Board Game Co., so I have access to games from there. Uh, secondly is I now do content creation. I get games that way. So I'm, I'm playing, I mean, I'm playing 300 games a year or something like that. 300 new games, not 300 games. I play like, at this point, I'm close to 1,000 games a year probably. But I play 300 new games a year. That does not align with most people's collection or hobby. And then thirdly, I think this is the one that's most relevant, even if you ignore those, and, and you should ignore those, I would still say I'm on the higher tier of how many games I play compared to your average person. And I think it's a fair comment, and it's one that I want to address because, well, because it's a fair comment. And so he said, like, these videos about games leaving the collection, he's like, he understands why they're there, they probably should be there, but also they don't really resonate, and then maybe I'll be getting rid of a game that he's excited about, and that's not, like, it's, it feels weird to not be excited because, like, I might be getting rid of a game that he has in his collection that he wants to play, and he sees me getting rid of it, and now he is a little bit less excited, even though he shouldn't be less excited because it's a great game. I just, I have to get rid of a lot of great games, and that's, it's a reasonable, it's a reasonable response. It's a reasonable question, so to speak. And to begin with, let's just give a little context. So, for myself, let's just go through the background. Board Game Co., the company, started because I backed, not because I backed, because I bought too many games. I got into this hobby big time, and I got far more games than I could play. Meaning, it's not that I get so many games because of Board Game Co., it's that Board Game Co. existed because I got so many games. Similarly with content creation. Content creation has definitely shifted the way I engage in the gaming sphere. There's no question about that. Prototypes, getting a lot more new games, coverage, reviews, all that stuff. But similarly, I would say that I've always been in the higher tier, in the, the degree of someone who always likes trying new things. Most of my plays are actually things that are older, things that stick in my collection. I've talked about this in the past. Most of my gaming plays are still older games. Getting Blood Rage, Terraforming Mars, Socolades, playing all my favorites. But that said... I still play a ton of new stuff. I really just play a lot of games. I play like roughly 20 games a week. That's going to be a thousand games a year. That is a lot of gaming time and a lot of room both for the new and for the old. And that very much does put me in a higher tier that may not align with yourself, wherever you are, or it may align, depending on who you are, depending on how many games you play, all of that. To that end, and I've tried balancing this line. Because it is a line that I question all the time. And I've tried balancing. One of the things I've talked about is that I no longer... Well, I, sometimes I slip up and I say it, but I, I try to avoid focusing less in my reviews on whether a game is leaving my collection or is staying or leaving my collection. I, I focus more on just what I believe the game is. 
And then from there, it may or may not be in my collection, but that's not necessarily a fair reflection given how many games I play. Especially if I'm playing 300 new games a year, that's an entire collection worth of games. I can't keep them all, and there are many games that I will not keep, even though they're great, but they just, it, I'm just playing too many. It doesn't, it doesn't, it's not a fair comparison. So I am aware of that disconnect, and I try to balance it, but I still will ultimately do what, I'll ultimately talk about what I'm doing. Because people can choose to take out of it what they want. You can choose to watch that video, that, you know, games leave my collection, and see whether it means anything to you. Because to some extent, it doesn't represent the cream of the crop for everyone, but for myself, for my own gaming taste, it absolutely does represent the cream of the crop. Is it a fair comparison to other games? Not in the slightest. This week, I got rid of a few games that are pretty solid. I'll talk about it more when we go over the videos of the week. But there are games every single month when I get rid of the games in that video, there are a few that I have twinges about. There's an aspect of I wish I had more time to keep all the games I could. But I can't. And so, yes, the ones I choose to keep do represent my own personal taste of the cream of the crop, but also not a fair comparison to whoever. There are dozens of games I've gotten rid of over the years that would make amazing collections that people would be incredibly envious of. They just reflect my gaming tastes and my personal favorites. So yeah, so it is a question that I thought was reasonable from Sydney, a comment that I thought was very, a very relevant point. But ultimately, you as the viewer have to choose what you want to take out of my content. When I talk about keeping games, getting rid of games, acquiring games, backing games, they absolutely will reflect someone who is a content creator, someone who runs a board game store, and I think most importantly, this is the one I think that matters more than the other two, someone who is absolutely addicted to games and loves going through them and rotating them and takes the time to sell them such that I don't have to worry about the burn cost quite as much as somebody else might. So yeah, it is relevant. Moving on, we have a few different things. First of all, there goes my die. First of all, uh, three different collaborations this week. I'll throw down links down below. I'll probably talk about it on Monday as well. But effectively, I did a video with Board Game Binge. If you want to see a bit, in fact, speaking of, you know, Board Game Co., my transition to the hobby, all that. If you want to find out a bit more about that pathway, what I, how all that went, what I want to do moving forward, all that stuff. I had a roughly 35-minute conversation with Board Game Binge. I'll link to that down below. He does interviews in the space in general. Worth checking out. You'll find a lot of people you like. On his, uh, on his videos. Secondly, I had a podcast with Going Analog. Going Analog has a great podcast, and then they also have, as well as that, a trivia show, which I wasn't on the trivia show yet, but hopefully at some point I will be. But effectively, they just they have solid content, both in their podcast and the trivia show. I was on the podcast talking about a few things from theme and board games. I Yes, I chose theme as my topic. They also asked me questions about Board Game Co. and how it dealt with COVID and what that side of things looked like. And then we also talked about, about we also talked about one more thing. I can't remember the last thing. There were three topics. Either way, going analog, so you can go ahead and check that out down below. And then thirdly, I was in a video with Tim Chun. Tim Chun did, he, he does some of the most amazing video stuff you'll ever see. I'll throw a link to his channel down below. His content is absolutely insane. He does these like cinematic review showcases, whatever it is. Uh, amazing stuff. And uh, basically, he did a video with a bunch of content collaborators, myself, Quackalope, Before You Play, Our Family Plays Games, and others, all talking about, you know, ideas in the board game space. I believe Lord of the Board was there, or anything else. Uh, Tim was on it, Lord of the Board, Our Family Plays Games, myself, Quackalope, and I feel like I'm missing one more. I really apologize to who I'm missing. I feel like I'm missing one more. But that's going to be that. So we had that over there. And those would be the collaborations of the week. I'll have more going on as well. I have something going up next week, probably probably next week, with Sarah Shaw. I'll have something with... Um, I have a few more, a few more upcoming collaborations going on. We'll talk with them as they come up. From there, news. News is actually going to be fairly light this week. So, you know, you know, if you've been waiting for the news, I apologize. But they are... They are both cool pieces of news. The Witcher announced that they, the Witcher, you know, game that's coming to Kickstarter May 24th or 26th, one of those two. They announced officially there will be a solo slash co-op mode for the game. So if you are worried about that fact that it's not solo, it's competitive, blah, 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 etc. or whatever. Well, they absolutely will have solo slash co-op. So you can look forward to that for your gaming taste being met effectively. And secondly, and this is the big one, Mind Clash announced a new title. Mind Clash Games announced a new title called Voidfall, which is going to be a 4X game. Now, 
I, I think 4X as a genre is something that will always both be exciting but also let you down. But at the same time, it's Mind Clash, and Mind Clash is always exciting and generally doesn't let you down. So, so we'll see how that goes. I'm certainly excited. The art looks great so far. We'll see how it actually plays out. Which brings us to the week in review. That's not true. Which brings us to what I played this week. We're going to go over that section. Let's go ahead and mute over here. So if I go to what I played this week, all plays. Still have not logged the plays from today, so that's unfortunate. But let's scroll back a bit. We have uh, we have a few things. So we have Canvas, more plays of Canvas. We have more plays, not more plays. We have some plays of Aldabas, Doors of Cartagena, currently on Kickstarter. I reviewed that on Tuesday. We have Alien Pet Shop, an upcoming Kickstarter, Vivid Memories. I reviewed that as well on Tuesday. We have Chronicles of Junagar, Age of Darkness. I've been getting in a bunch of plays. In fact, it looks like I have like three or four logged. I probably need to log some more. But Chronicles of Junagar have Chronicles of Junagar, Age of Darkness uh, has a okay. Where I'm let me backtrack. Chronicles of Junagar, Age of Darkness. I am. Is, is, a bunch of plays into the campaign. I actually went a few plays in, then restarted and went through it again just to clear up some rules, things, lots of rules. I hope to have a review coming this week, probably Tuesday. I say hope to because I want to finish at least another scenario, and then if I can in time and get the review up, then I will have that. If not, then I'll probably go up Saturday. So you can expect to see a review of Chronicles of Dunagar, Age of Darkness, either Tuesday or Saturday. Very much looking forward to it. We will talk about that more. Zama says 2nd Edition. We're getting a bunch of plays of that in. You know, we have a whole bunch of plays here, both the base game as well as the campaign, and we'll talk about that more later this video. We have Viticulture. Got another play of Viticulture in. Some more plays of Canvas. Got a whole bunch of plays of Canvas. Wow, Canvas has been popular this week. Got in Red Rising. Got in a bunch of plays of Red Rising. I think I have to log another play for today. No, I have today's play as well. So we got in like three or four plays of Red Rising. We have more Chronicles of Junagar. We have Fleet the Dice Game. And that is everything I have listed over here. Here, I feel like I'm missing things. We have connecting flights. Did I say connecting flights? We have connecting flights, which I have a review coming up today. We have anything else I missed. Did I say dive? I think dive was last week. I can't always keep track of what was when. So that is going to be what I have in terms of what I played. I feel like I'm missing something. What did I play today? I played Red, played Red Rising today. I played, oh, I played uh, Katamino. I have to log that. There's a few things I missed in here, but either way, that is going to be what I played or most of what I played this week, which brings us to the week in review. Week in review, what happened last week, all of that. So effectively, Saturday. Saturday was going to be two reviews. We had a review for Chai Tifa 2 as well as for Merchant's Cove. Uh, Chai Tifa 2 is a solid two-player version of Chai, Chai T, whatever it is, the T game. Uh, it's very interesting. I don't know where it stands in my collection long term it, right now. So I think I, what did I give it? I think I gave it a three out of five with the potential to go for four to five. I think that's what I did. Or did I give it a four to five? I can't remember exactly what I gave it, but effectively it is straddling that line for me. It's very much a rewarding system. It is it is above average to me. It's very tight, very thinky, lots of fun. Also, I had a few nitpicks about it that I am curious to see how they will be cleaned up. I'm definitely paying attention to the final version of the game. If it if those nitpicks are cleaned up, I can very much see it staying long term. If they aren't, then we'll see. It's one I'm still not ready to let go of just yet, but also one where I want to see where it goes. For Merchant's Cove, Merchant's Cove is absolutely staying in my collection for now. For now is going to be the, the key wards. Merchant's Cove, I gave it a 4 to 5. Really enjoy it, while also feeling that it may exhaust itself depending on both the secret stash and the other characters as I get them to the table. So Merchant's Cove is one that I am excited about, I am enjoying. I don't know whether it stays in my collection long term, but I think I will get a minimum of 10 plays out of it before I, it's gone. I think, I could be wrong. 10 plays is just an arbitrary number I chose to reflect trying all the characters at least once, and then leaving some room for extra plays in as well. It may stay longer than that. It depends on how easy it is to get to the table, whether other people want to play it. For right now, solidly enjoying Merchant's Cove. And full review on Saturday, of course. On Sunday, Sunday we had Marvel United updates, where I went over all the updates from Marvel United. And of course, come on, decided to um, drop a few more optional buys the next day. They dropped optional buys for, uh, the, for, for cardboard villain dashboards for both the original Marvel United and the current one. And then they dropped a Fantastic Four optional buy. In fact, Marvel United, Marvel United became... Kaman's highest funded Kickstarter of all time, which is pretty cool for Kaman. For us, for us, it's like $600 for, you know, a bunch of chibi light gameplay. But I'll talk about that later this week. I, I hope to, we'll see if it goes, I hope to have a video upcoming this week where I talk about Marvel United extensively, both as a, you know, Kaman's biggest Kickstarter, as well as the aspect of why I chose to back a game that I absolutely think that I shouldn't have backed, or more specifically, why I went all in on a game that I think I shouldn't have gone all in. And I'm not saying that sarcastically. I think I genuinely should not have gone all in. I think I made a bad choice in go by going all in. And yet I will explain what my logic, rationale, all that. Understand all the logic and rationale that I will give you is mitigating, not actually a good reason. I think I should not have gone all in, gone all in and I think for the most part, you also should not have gone all in. 
but we'll go into that. It's a, it's a nuanced conversation. I, I certainly allow for the possibility in my life of doing things that I shouldn't. I mean, every time I eat a cookie while I'm trying to lose weight, oh, I forgot, forgot to weigh myself. Jeez, I keep forgetting to put this in my thingy. Every time I eat a cookie when I'm trying to lose weight, I am effectively making a decision that I think I should not and allowing myself to do so. There's a lot of times in life that we do that. Either way, this is really the video that I'll be talking about later. As far as weight, now that we got there, so I forgot totally to weigh myself this week, so I'm not sure what I'm up to. Basically, since I started this like four weeks or four weeks ago, I've lost a pound, a 1.2 pounds. Not what I want to lose, but also at least it's down. The problem with, the problem with losing that little is that Ju Judaism has a lot of holidays in it, and the holidays kind of mess with you. So if you're not losing like half a pound a week, you'll get it to a holiday and then gain like three pounds. So that 1.2 pound weight loss is not progress. It is putting a dent in the next upcoming holiday. So we'll see how it goes. So it could be worse, but absolutely could be better. I need, I need to be a little more self-control and all that stuff. Going on to Monday. Monday was to back or not to back. So I talked about this last week. Effectively, to back or not to back is a series I do. It's, it was an hour long this week. It's going to be another one next week, of course. But I also started a new a new series for it as well. Uh, this one's Patreon exclusive behind a $5 tier. I talked about that more both last week. Back, I talked about it both last week as well as in at the end of the to back or not to back. Effectively, it's a video series where I am aggressively mean towards the fact that you should not back certain games. Not with made-up reasons, with genuine reasons, but I also don't balance it at all. So I talked about why I put it behind a paywall, both the $5 paywall as well as in general, and, and it's going to be a combination of providing value for Patreon members in general, as well as the fact that it's not a series I'm comfortable being out in the world in general without context. I don't want people stumbling upon that video because it is fairly aggressive. It's not balanced. It is an approach that is designed to incentivize yourself and myself, by the way. There's, there's at least two games that I changed my mind on backing just because I'm doing the video. Saying something enough times on camera... Well, it kind of makes you think you should probably listen to yourself at a certain point. But that is neither here nor there. T Tuesday. Tuesday was going to be three reviews. Reviews for Aldemar's Doors of Cartagena, Drawn to Adventure, and Vivid Memories. From those three, so all of them, I think I think all of them were a three out of five, if I'm not mistaken, with all specific reasons where, where they can go. Uh, Aldemar's is an interesting one. It's a fun little puzzle. It's good for a few plays. For myself, I don't think it's a keeper. It's more thinky than I want in a filler game. Uh, I, in general, I found thinky fillers just while they are intriguing and they are good for a bunch of plays, long term, I don't find that those kinds of things last in my collection. Drawn to Adventure, I think, is good for a few more plays, but ultimately, it's a little longer than I would like for the gameplay experience it's delivering. Not thinky, it's a filler that's long. It's a long filler, which is not really a thing. So again, it falls into this mid-range mid zone where I think it's a solid game. I think it's worth trying. If you backed it, please do play it. If you bought, backed it, bought it, pre-ordered, whatever, play it. It's, good, it's a good game. Genuinely fun, genuinely enjoyable. Also, I don't think I'm willing to dive into that hour-long experience on a regular basis. So I think I'm going to play it a few more times, try a few characters, and then move on from it. And Vivid Memories, Vivid Memories is a hard one as well. That one I'm paying attention to the final product. I really enjoyed the puzzle and the sequencing, but also left me wanting to do much more. So unless that changes, it may or may not be one that stays in my collection long term. I want to play it more. I'm not done with it yet but I don't see it sticking around long-term for myself. On Wednesday, Wednesday was going to be games leaving my collection. So I went over the video after. So it's something I usually do is I, throughout the week, I look at the, the titles I got rid of and I question which ones do I feel bad about. And for that video, there's only two that I have a twinge of self-doubt about. I'm not changing my mind, but I, I do have that twinge of like, I don't want to get rid of that game. And those two are going to be Arboretum and Coloma. Arboretum and Coloma are the two that I look at that list and I'm like, I wish I could play that more, though. Like, I really want those back, even though they, they haven't left. But, well, Arboretum, I'm, you know, Arboretum I already actually gave to someone else. I already gave it to a friend, so that one's gone. And Coloma, I decided to sell and already sold, which brings us to Thursday. Thursday was how to sell a game. So, on Thursday, I did a video on how to sell a game where I took Coloma from the video before, and I just immediately went on Facebook and sold it. And I videoed the process, start to finish, of what I'm doing. And I posted in an update comment, but effectively, uh, Coloma sold roughly 25 minutes after I posted it. So, that should be a testament to the fact that what I'm doing on Facebook clearly works. It may or may not work for you. That is a longer conversation, and it may or may not work for the price points. It may be less relevant if you're international, but it certainly is a process that works, as evidenced by my Coloma selling 25 minutes after I listed it. So that was going to be uh, Wednesday and Thursday. And to be clear, by the way, even though Arboretum and Coloma have their reasons why I can't have second thoughts, I very rarely actually change my mind once a game is leaving my collection. There's usually a reason why I'm getting rid of it, and the self-doubt that comes along with that choice is part of the package. But if I care enough, I can get it back. I usually don't. 
but once in a while I do. I would much rather, I'd much rather get rid of 100 games and get five of them back than hold on to 100 because what if I want to keep five of them? The math doesn't work out. So that's going to be uh, Wednesday and Thursday. Friday. Friday is probably, keep in mind this is Thursday night right now so I can't say this with confidence, Friday is probably a video where I tell you to stop backing games on Kickstarter. Genuinely. I mean, not genuinely, sort of genuinely. Because effectively I have a debate with Quackalop where we brought up a topic and we both chose a side or he chose a side and I took the opposing side. And so he spends this video, he spends the whole video telling you to back games on Kickstarter and I spend the whole video telling you why you shouldn't. And it's basically just a debate of taking two different stances, two different viewpoints, and going head-to-head -head on it. I think it's a fun video, an entertaining video, but and understand it's we're taking sides for the sake of having the argument, for the sake of having the debate. And if you watch all the way to the end, you'll see we do kind of reach a conclusion, although it is a conclusion that will be weighted or measured depending on what type of person you are and why you're backing games on Kickstarter. But I say that's probably going on Friday because I still have to finish editing it and throwing up a thumbnail and all that stuff. It will probably be fine, but also it's uh, 11.50 at night right now and I have to go to sleep right after this video, so I have to get this done between 8 and 10 a.m. in order for it to go up in time. If not, I'll have a different video that's already prepped to go. So probably, we'll see. You'll know, I mean, by now you already know what happened. I just don't know what happened. So that's going to be Friday, which brings us to today. Today we have a review going up at 10 for Connecting Flights. It is a solo-only review. Unfortunately, I was not able to get it to the table with competitive play, so pay attention to that one. I touched upon how the competitive plays briefly, but it's more about the solo and the general structure of the game. And then later that day, uh, later to today, I have four at 2 o'clock, at 2 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, we have a review for Whistle Mountain. Whistle Mountain is, well, watch the review. We'll talk about it next week as well. And then lastly, coming up next week, coming up next week, we're going to have a few different options. First of all, we have have uh, what I did and didn't back with Wina, so going over the Kickstarters for April and what I did and didn't back in April, then I hopefully will have a play this, not that, with Zombicide Second Edition versus Zombicide Black Plague. Zombicide Black Plague is currently my reigning champion that I hope to I hope to play Invader more and see how that goes, but effectively, as of right now, I will be doing a play this, not that, with Zombicide Black Plague versus Zombicide Second Edition. I say hopefully because I have a few more games I want to get in first, but I should be able to do them in time and then get a video up later this week. And then secondly, I will have, not secondly, that was secondly, and thirdly, I touched upon this already, I hope to have a video about Marvel United and why you should or shouldn't have backed it, and basically why you shouldn't have backed it, or why I shouldn't have backed it, and you can extrapolate that to yourself as you will. That's basically it. That's the Week in Review. Wish me luck on getting more plays of all three of these this week. I really want to get Dark Rituals and Adventure Tactics played. I am finishing up Chronicles of Dunagar. Not finishing up, but I'm finishing up far enough that I can get the review done, at which point it will probably get shelved for a bit, not for lack of interest, but rather just for interest in other things, and I'll come back to it later. Well, I mean, spoilers, I guess. Maybe, maybe not. We'll see. And that's basically it. I am Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. I hope you have a good one. I hope you have a great weekend. Play a lot of games. Have fun. All that stuff. And as always, have a good one.